Air Graceful's Adventures, The Jungle Challenge. Chapter 5. Negative, negative Nature. We are we. Where's camp? Omar asked. Wherever it is, we'll need to get out of the jungle first to find it. Bear, are you ready for a real adventure? Omar thought for a moment. Maybe when they got back, they would be famous and get awarded a special prize. They might even make it into the genius world record. Sure, I'm I'm in. Omar said. He tugged at his seat T-shirt, which was shocked in his hurt hand. It didn't sting anymore, but it had rubbed a lot. How long will it take to get back? Everything here takes some time and some characters looked at him and down. You're in quite a hurry back there. Out here, if we cut corners, we die. But I like to move fast. One more replied, you're last, so do I. But if you want to move fast, First, you had to learn how to move safely. Anyway, we'll get to that. First up, tell me your name. Omar. Well, Omar. We'll sell Elf soon. But not like that. Shirt and t-shirt aren't for the jungle. Everything scratches and scrapes. So you wanted, want as little exposed skin as possible. There were mage in his backpack and pulled out a pair of boots. Then Bear took out a shirt and a trouser of the same tough material that he was wearing. Try these four skies and all go and get something for that cut of yours. Omar pulled on the new cloth and in them faintly felt better. The tough material would stand up to the jungle, thorns, and rape. <laughs> and soak up the sweet that covered his skin. The boot gripped his feet and keep him steady on the spongy ground. He looked at the pile of his old clothes and wondered what to do with them. He started to fold them up carefully. Bear came back and saw what he was doing. Good job. Look after your things, and they'll look after you. Put them in this, he said, opening his backpack. And look, I also got, got you some of nature umbrellas. Er, held out a handful of brownie red berries. Rotten berries. They pressed his palms together and rubbed hard to engage the berries into a thick red paste. Let's see that cut. Omar consensually held up held his hands up. Bear jab a finger into the
paste. The paste and smeared it on. The throbbing turned into stabbing. Omar yelped. <laughs> That really hurt. It feels like an army of ants chewing on my hand. Peter smiled and keep rubbing. That meant it's working. You know, some places they use bullet ants to clamp a wound together instead of stitches. Their jaws are about a elementary wide. He went on, so you hold the ant with the jaw, either side of the wound, make it bite you, then you twist its body off and leave its head in your skin. Air paused. Consider yourself luckily we have ban a bandit. Omar imagined a row of dead ant heads on his hand, holding the side of the cut together. Okay, maybe he could take a little stinging from the berries after all. Bear washed the paste away with the water from the bottle and wrapped, wrapped it the wound in a clean bandage from the box in his pack, backpack. Next, he fold a, a red and white checked batanda and tied it around Omar's hand. This will protect the bandage and keep it clean, Boom explained. That's really important in the jungle. Last of all, Bear uses Matchy to cut Omar a stick like this. He loped off a long, thin branch from the tree and sliced off the leaf. They took a couple of mouthful of water from Bear's water bottle and set off. It was like before. When Bear got, had got Omar out of the bushes, he didn't want to walk in a straight line. He ducked and dodged and shirled and sitted. And everywhere he went, his stick went first. Omar did his best to copy him. Without his stick getting stuck in a thick tangle of branches and pulled out his hand. That's Im This is impossible, Omar said out loud. Bears answered without looking around. Patience and persistence are key in the jungle. Don't rush and never give up and learn from how the animal moves. Imagine you're back at home on a busy Saturday. Bears went on. They're trying to walk down the street, and so is everyone else. Do you walk in a straight line? Omar thought he knew exactly what the weekend shopping crowd was like when it was busy. Everyone was bigger than him, so he could do was shuffle around along and look for gasp. No, I guess I have to move about a bit to to get between people. 
and sometimes and sometimes you get over to one side to, of the pavement to keep going right step. maybe someone suddenly stopped to talk on their phone so you have to step around them sure Omar had never really thought about it before. But what I exactly what he did, I see someone take the phone out of their pocket. So I know they're going to stop in a, just a moment. So I could kind of dodge them in an aggravate. Fear hmm? nodded. Well, it's the same thing here. You need to always paste. That's what the tigers and leopards do. They consider every move and go silently, stealthily through the undergrowth. That way they move swiftly and independently. He paused and to look around. Boom, boom, boom. It's water again. In the jungle, your mind is never in natural. You need to be alert to danger and absolutely learn to look ahead. See, it comes with plastic. they pointed with the stick. Maybe it look the same to you right now. I can see right here, there's two bushes growing together so we could push our way between them. And now I can see that jungles look darker ahead on our right than on our left. That's because the ground start to rise there. So we go this way and follow the low ground. That's what how it went. Omar and Bear pushed on through the jungle. Whenever Omar saw, saw Bear change direction, he st tried to work out. Omar and Bear push on through the jungle. Whenever Omar saw Bear change direction, he tried to work out what Bear had seen to make him do it. But he couldn't. In fact, of anything, he reckoned, reckoned Bear was holding back because he didn't think Omar could keep up. What well, Omar would show him he had at least, at least 10 minutes to get used to it. They could do this a whole lot quicker if he went ahead. Look, there it was a gap between two trees, pain and as they Omar quickly pushed ahead of Bear to get through it first. Just then, something sneezed his foot and stopped him dead. The rest of his body kept moving.
你你你眼睛闭着看得见的吗 ？The ground rushed up to meet him, and before he could do anything, he had planted his face <laughs> in the soft rotting leaf. 你就没张开眼睛看的。Oh, more lay there for a moment, and splat out some twigs. He felt absolutely rigorous. You okay? Bear said. Helped <laughs> him back up. Take it steady. Remember. <laughs> Omar stood on one foot carefully to check it wasn't hurt. Nope, the only thing hurt was his pride. I'll be all right, he grumbled. Come on then. So Omar followed behind. Bear, still something with impatience, but trying not to push so far or too fast. Every fifteen minute or so, they took a drink from Bear's bottle, but only a for a few moments before Bear would push them ever onward. Finally, finally, Bear called a stop after a couple of hours. You hungry? You hungry? You hungry? He said, I know I, I am. Know I am totally, totally. Omar agreed eagerly. Bear swung his backpack off and left it on the log. The log looked rotten and large. <laughs> Chunks of it. You have hungry? For half. Um, then I take a chew of it. Have fallen off. Bear, Omar inspected Bear to open up his the backpack and get some food out. But instead, Bear jammed the tip. Of his blade into the bark of the log, a piece as long as Omar's forearm came away easily. Here's a here's a lunch, Bear said with a wry smile. Omar craned his neck forward with horror. And stared at a mass of enormous, wriggling grubs. Thanks for watching. Bye.